Hello. In this video tutorial, I'll be explaining what the different measurements of data are for the GCSE Computer Science courses available in the UK. I'll cover the AQA, OCR, Edexcel and Welsh Board syllabuses and let you know what the differences are that you should be aware of when doing your revision. You should already be aware of the fact that all data in a computer is simply ones and zeros. Since computers are simply electronic devices, filled effectively with millions of little switches, each of which can either be on or off, it's helpful for us to think about each switch as being a one or a zero. Everything that you've ever seen or done on a computer will have been converted into ones and zeros, representing switches being on or off. But knowing how many of those little switches are being used to represent a data file or a program is why we need to have units of measurement. The smallest unit of measurement is a single binary digit, a one or a zero. This represents one single switch being on or off. A single binary digit, a one or a zero, is known this is a contraction of the words binary digit, although whether it's the first two letters or the first and the last two is up to you. But a bit is the smallest possible measurement we have of data. Because a single bit is so small, it doesn't really allow us to represent very much. And so we tend to use strings of ones and zeros or strings of bits. The most common group size of bits is 8, and 8 bits is known as a byte. A byte is 8 ones and zeros, and it's enough to be able to represent something as significant as a letter or a symbol on your keyboard. Although 8 ones and zeros isn't a lot, when written together they can be a little confusing to read by human eyes. Imagine looking at lots of bytes of data. Those ones and zeros can start jumping around after a while. For this reason, we humans tend to break a byte of data into two groups of four bits. And we have a name for a group of four bits. Remember, a byte is eight ones and zeros. So what do you think half a byte would be called? Computer scientists do have a sense of humor although I think you probably have to be one to appreciate it, because half a byte is called a nibble. Yes, that's genuinely what we call a string of four bits, or half a byte. So we have the smallest possible unit of measurement as a bit, a single binary digit. Four bits are known as a nibble, and eight bits are known as a byte. The next unit of measurement is a kilobyte, but when it comes to understanding how many bytes are in a kilobyte, it unfortunately depends upon which exam board you're studying with. It's important to make sure that you know which exam board you're with, either AQA, OCR, Edexcel, or the Welsh board, because there are a couple of differences between them, the first of which concerns what a kilobyte is. For AQA, a kilobyte is 1,000 bytes, just as a kilogram is 1,000 grams, a kilometer is 1,000 meters, and a kilowale is completely irrelevant, sorry. But for all other exam boards, a kilobyte remains the traditional 1,024 bytes. 1,024 might seem odd, but if you remember your binary table and your power of two, 1024 is just continuing from there. So the eighth column, 128 double, is 256, then 512, and 1024 is just the closest power of 2 to 1000, and is what has been used for many years by computer scientists. Except for AQA. To be fair, they're not alone, and you will come across fierce arguments online between people swearing that a kilobyte is a thousand bytes and those swearing that it's a thousand and twenty-four. 
But at this point, it's simply important for you to know what your exam board says. Another difference between the exam boards is the spelling of nibble. I doubt you'd lose marks for getting it wrong, but it could be confusing if you come across an unfamiliar spelling. For all exam boards other than the Welsh board, nibble is spelt the same way as when you're talking about having a quick snack. But the Welsh board have decided that since bite is spelt by, nibble should be spelt ny. So, depending upon which exam board you're with, each unit of measurement beyond a kilobyte continues the pattern of being either 1000 or 1024 times larger than the previous measurement. All you have to do, therefore, is remember the correct order. A kilobyte is a thousand bytes, a megabyte, a thousand kilobytes, a gigabyte, a thousand megabytes, and a terabyte, the largest measurement you'll need at GCSE, is a thousand gigabytes. To help you remember the order of these units of measurement, it's helpful to have a mnemonic. The one I give my students is the very slightly disturbing Kiss My Goat Tonight. Yes, it's weird, but honestly, the weirder the mnemonic, the better it sticks. So, to recap, the smallest unit of measurement is a bit, which is a single one or zero. Next, we have a nibble, four ones and zeros, and then a bite, eight ones and zeros. After those three, you just have to increase the size by either 1,020 or 1,000 if you're with AQA. In your exam, you may need to convert between different units of measurement, so let's quickly look at how you'd do this. First of all, have a think about how you'd work out what 24 nibbles would be in bytes. Remember that one byte is two nibbles. So if you divide the number of nibbles by two, you'll have the answer, 12 bytes. This is a more complicated example. If you're calculating the file size of a bitmap or sound file, you may be faced with calculations such as this, converting three and a half thousand bytes into kilobytes. Remember that assuming there are a thousand bytes in a kilobyte, just divide the smaller measurement by the number of times bigger the larger measurement is. In this case, three and a half thousand divided by a thousand is 3.5. Finally, look at this one. One and a half million bytes into megabytes. You'll always need to go through each stage separately, moving from bytes to kilobytes first, and then to megabytes. Each time, divide the smaller unit by the number of times bigger the larger unit is. So, one and a half million bytes becomes one and a half thousand kilobytes. And then finally, 1.5 megabytes. These sorts of calculations are a good deal easier if you're with AQA in considering a kilobyte to be 1000 bytes and so on, which means that such calculations are less likely for other exam boards to expect you to do, but AQA may require you to work some of these calculations out. I hope you found this video useful, but if you have any questions or comments, please do leave a comment below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.